the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. I want you all to see this because this is serious. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians the 4th chapter. I want you to hear these scriptures because this, this, this is so serious. Ephesians the 4th chapter. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians the 4th chapter. Look the Bible says in verse 26 and, and verse 27. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 and 27. Listen to what the Bible says here in Ephesians 4. It says these words. It says, Be ye angry and what? Sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither do what? Yes. Did you hear what the Bible says, friends? It says that literally, if you, don't allow, if you allow anger to control you, it becomes an opening for the devil to actually possess you. Amen. Have you ever heard of people who actually, when they actually got angry, they started seeing red? And they just started hitting it or, or doing whatever else and shooting. And, it, and, and literally when, when all the smoke cleared, the person that they were actually uh, beating up on was dead because they had no control over their anger. Because what happened was is that when they didn't control that anger, that anger became a, a, a doorway where the, by the devil could come in and take full control or possession of that person. It happens all the time. That's why you have so many people in prison this very day. That's right. Many of them didn't mean to do it. But when they got angry, the anger possessed them. That means that you can't be angry. The Bible says, be ye angry, but what? Sin not. Moses was angry when he threw down those what? Those Ten Commandments. Jesus was angry when he went in and he actually threw over the, 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 the tables of the money changers and those who sold doves. But he didn't allow the anger to make him mad at the person, but at the sin. we got to be angry at sin, but not at sinners. All right, now. Yet we can't say for sure that this was the cause of the legion of demons assaulting and capturing the bodies and minds of these men. Maybe it was something else me in the Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. Maybe it was something else. I'm not for sure actually what caused these men to have a legion of demons but maybe it might just have been this. Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 5. Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 5. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Now if you're not, say wait. Okay, I'll wait a little bit. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. And here's what the Bible says. It says these words. It says, Thus shalt thou, excuse me, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a what? Yes. This is what the Bible says. It says, Visit iniquity of the fathers upon the what? Yes. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy to the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Did you hear what the Bible said, friends? What the Bible essentially says is many times we actually are being tempted or are oppressed by demons that have been in families for several generations. That's serious, isn't it, friends? So sometimes, in fact, that's why I was talking to somebody and I was talking about how, you know, this particular lady had adopted some children. And, this, uh, and, and, and the children of this lady that she had adopted, their mother and father both were deceased. In one case, both of the parents had been shot and killed. And, 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 and so this, this adopted child, now, she, she wasn't a, a college graduate, but I was telling this lady, I said, the fact that that young lady even graduated from high school and did as good as she did was nothing but the grace of God because she had a whole lot of, many times, you realize what it is, family demons. <coughs> family demons that are literally trying to hold them back. Do you realize that there are many times, or shall we say demons, that have been in families for who knows how many generations, and sadly with each, each, each corresponding generation committing more and more sin, it's like more and more demons are, shall we say, in the family. That's why, you know, many times you'll have a father who was a rolling stone. Then his son is what? Rolling stone. 
Then the grandson is a what? Rolling stone. And it goes on and on and on and on until it, gets, it, it becomes almost normal for it to be a household where the father has children and it keeps on going. So it literally is a miracle when you have one child who makes a decision, I'm not going to do what my parents did. And it has to be nothing but the grace of God because many times it is demons in families, friends. And not only is it many times on the part of the man, but it is also on the part of the woman who have children by several different men. Am I talking to somebody? And it goes on from generation to generation to generation. And literally, friends, you don't realize that many times you're being pulled down, shall we say, by demons that have been in your families for years. And you've got to ask God, Lord, break the curses that have been placed upon me from generations past. Because the Bible says it's visited upon, visited upon the children to the third and fourth generation. So sometimes you're not suffering because of what you did. You're suffering because of what your parents or your grandparents or your great-grandparents did. You've got to ask God. God, break this chain on my brain. Break this chain on my mind. So maybe, just maybe, these guys' parents have been engaged in some terrible practices and it brought all these curses upon these men. And then when they even sin just minutely, the devil almost had total control of these people's brains. We don't know that for sure. We can't say that for sure. Maybe it was something else. Maybe they were engaged in witchcraft. Maybe they were engaged in some other sin. But whatever the case may be, friends, literally they were under the control of a legion of demons. Or maybe it was this. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11 and verse 24 through 26. Maybe it was even this. And this is a serious one. Because this one is for church folks. Luke chapter 11, verse 24. And going through verse number 26. Luke chapter 11, verse 24, and going through verse number 26. Say amen if you're there. Amen. It says these words. Listen to this, friends. It says, when the unclean spirit, listen to this, friends, is gone out of man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my what? Once I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it what? Sweat and garnish, then goeth he and taketh to him, how many? Seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the what? First, who's to say that these men did not at one time know the truth? Who's to say these men at one time may have not actually been delivered from whatever it is that they were actually dealing with, but they kept on going back. And when they kept on going back, those demons kept on coming back. And they came back in even greater force. And they came back in even greater force. And they came back in even more exponential force to the point that literally, friends, now they were under the control of thousands of demons to the point that when you looked at them, they didn't look like humans. They looked like animals. Cutting themselves with knives, hiding in the tombs, crying out all day long. They were terrorizing the people when people even people didn't even want to pass that way. And friends, not only that, friends, the Bible says that even when it came to them being in chain, and the chains were all these people, they were totally under the control of demons to such an extent that even chains couldn't bind them, and they would break the chain. I have to tell him this story. Elvin Harris is going to get, uh, get on my case because he probably wanted to tell it himself. But he told us a story last, this past Sunday, which I thought was pretty serious. He said that there was an evangelistic series that Elder E. Cleveland was in, involved in. And there was this young girl, and she was constantly interrupting the service. Every time she would come, she'd interrupt the service. And so they'd literally have to get her into a car and drive her away. And when they'd bring her back, she would do it again, and they would have to drive her away. And then one day they said, you know what, we need to pray for this little girl. So they got down as a group, and they began to pray for this little girl. This is what Elder Harris says. He says that as they were praying, he witnessed it for himself. Now, he probably wants to tell himself, but I'm going to tell him. 
He says that he witnessed this girl's head go completely around. <laughs> so that she was looking backwards. And she looked at one of the Bible workers. And the demon spoke to her and said, What are you doing here? You're as much of a devil as I am. And Elder Harris says he remembers that that, that Bible worker was so uncomfortable. And Elder Cleveland told the Bible worker, I don't know what you're engaged in, but you can't be involved in this anymore. What I'm saying is it's real. And for those who've ever been engaged in spiritual, you know, in, in working for the Lord, you will see it. I've seen it even sometimes when I'm preaching. Right when I get ready to preach, a little kid will just, my wife knows, so she was in here. Well, that kid will literally go, would go crazy. The kid would just, ah! It, I mean, all throughout the rest of the service, it wouldn't happen, but all of a sudden, when I began to preach, some of who preached know, that, know what I'm talking about. The kid would lose his mind. The kid would lose her mind. Same thing happened with this other kid. The kid would lose its mind. Because, friends, the devil doesn't want people to be saved. So here it was that these demon-possessed men were running at Jesus. And guess what happened, friends? The disciples began to run away. <laughs> Am I right? Look at that here. The question is, what, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Why is it, why is it that the church runs away from demons? That's a serious question. I'll tell you why that many times the church runs away from demons. Because the church is many times dealing with demons themselves. Am I talking to somebody? Or, or, or it's because they have not been made perfect in love. Because the Bible says that love casts out all what? Fear. Because when you're made perfect in love, you are more concerned about that person than you are about your own safety. But the church runs because many times the church is not connected and they are afraid of the person who used to be their master. It, I don't know if y'all get what I'm saying. It's almost like, it's almost like, you know, right after the Emancipation Proclamation, and it's almost like after the slaves had been set free, even though they were still in the South, they still have those people who used to be their master. Are you with me? And while even though the paper said, you are set free, and they probably even heard about the paper, they still saw their master, who was now the head of the sharecropping agency. Am I talking to somebody? And when they saw him and they heard his voice, they were almost tempted to obey him just like they did when they were in slavery. Are you with me? So even though many of us have been set free, many times we hear the voice of the person who used to control our lives. We find ourselves, I mean, I mean, trembling and saying, whoa, I ain't messing with him. That, 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 oh, yeah, well, he's not my master. And even though Jesus might be right there with us, the one who delivered us, and the one who actually saw his power working for us, because, friends, they just seen the night before that Jesus spoke, and the winds and the waves obeyed the voice of Jesus, so they should have remember that if he can deliver me from some winds and some waves, he can deliver me from some demons also. But because, you know, how, soon, how soon people forget, friends, how soon people forget that God has worked on your, on, on your behalf in the past. As the old saying goes, we have nothing to fear for the future, lest we forget how God has led us and his teachings in our past history. And we remember how he brought us. And we remember how he saved us. And we remember how he lifted us, friends. We would trust and believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But those, but those, but those, those disciples were ready for their lives. And you know, friends, this can I talk to somebody here? Part of the reason that certain people don't get delivered is because the church is afraid of them. I mean, you know, as long as you look pretty good in church, we ain't afraid of you. Well, you know, some people, when they look all crazy, talking, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 when, when they look all crazy.
crazy, I almost want them to do it again. No, like, when they look all crazy, foaming at the mouth, talking to somebody, they acting all, you know, just acting crazy in church. Anybody seen some of that stuff ever in church before? Church members get afraid. Mm. Many times we're afraid to pray for them. I don't know if I'm praying for that brother. <laughs> and friends, if God was dependent on the church for people to be saved, not everybody would ever make it. Because many times the church runs for their very lives. The church runs back to the safety of the boat because they're too afraid to deal with demon-possessed people. That's why I don't see many pedophiles or rapists or murderers who join the church. I, I, I never forget. I was doing a Bible study. And so I was doing a Bible study with this particular gentleman. He said, man, I used to be out there in the world. I used to be out there in the world. I said, oh, you weren't out there in the world, brother. I always tease people and say, you, you were perfect your entire life. You didn't do anything wrong. He was like... <laughs> He's like, well, you know, I, I used to be out there in the world. I think he said, I was a drunk. I did some terrible things. I killed a man. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, please give me strength. He was an old man. He was an old man. He said, I spent many years in jail. I, I said, what? Well, was, was, was it an accident or death? He said, no, no. I took a, took a break or something. And I, you know, I was oh, Lord, help me. I wouldn't like that one. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm saying many times, many times, many times, those people never get saved because the church people are running away from them. But Jesus didn't run. I'm so glad Jesus didn't run. Because I said, I said this, I want you to hear this. I said the sermon title was possession. The reason Jesus didn't run. It's because as possessed as they were of demons, Jesus was more possessed of the Holy Spirit.